Right, so Warframe's new infested open world and everything we know about it based on yesterday's Tenocon reveal. What's up you beautiful feckers, how you all doing? So this video has a lot of information for us to get through, so apologies if it is a long one. Now when the Heart of Deimos drops at the end of August, it's going to bring a lot of new content to the game. New Warframes, new weapons, new enemy types, new planets, new inhabitants, new quests, new lore, and of course the infested open world tile set called Cambian Drift, which can be found on the new planet or moon, I know, called Deimos. So this is the new infested moon beside Mars that comes with its own set of missions that you have to progress through until you get to the Cambian Drift mission node and then what looks like the new town hub beyond that called the Necrolisk. Now with this arrival they have removed the derelict tile set okay so that has been absorbed into Deimos which means no more derelict keys you won't have to build them anymore it also means that you might want to get done with your derelict missions before the end of this month since it is disappearing if you want to gain that mastery especially with the steel path also just before they do remove the derelict. Now the open world like I said is called Cambian Drift and the town hub is called the Necrolisk. These will function I'd say in the exact same way as Cetus or Fortuna. The Necrolisk seems to have the same minimap symbols for town vendors that cover fishing, conservation, bounties, factions, possibly crafting augmented weapons as well or augmented items. But we also got to see some of the inhabitants. Now we got to meet Otak and Lloyd who is a bipolar cephalon trapped inside a Necroloid casing. Makes complete sense, right? Kubro's legs. He's the little claptrap styled floating road cone that we've seen in the footage directing you towards quests. And apparently they form, okay, so Otak and Lloyd form the secret faction of Deimos. Now I'm guessing this could be like Vox Solaris their version of that in the Necrolisk, which we'll learn more about according to Steve at a future date. So more standing to be earned. Now Digital Extremes want this, I think the open world infested area, to be more of a compact experience with Deimos, so maybe the map might not be as big as the other open worlds, which I'm totally fine with, but apparently there is a lot more inside the planet than maybe what we see on its surface. So we've been told it has a very deep expansive cave system and in these caves are some other areas to find like some of the old Entrati structures which have guardians to defend them. Guardians like this Necromech that Rebecca fought on yesterday's stream. It was only level 35 but it looked pretty damn tanky so maybe along the lines of I guess the Wolf of Saturn 6 that kind of tankiness. Hopefully it will be a fun fight but it did look pretty badass. Apparently the Necromech Necromechs have skeletons inside them and there are three different variants of them complete with huge weapons similar to arcwing weapons with regenerating ammo to make sure they don't run out of bullets. Now some of these Necromechs can also be controlled by our Tenno. If you find a broken one lying around we can maybe leave a Warframe and enter that broken Necromech and use it to fight the infestation instead which we got to see on the dev stream as well. In an old world style, more style, yeah! <laughs> Now as far as new infested enemies go, we had some very big chunky new ones to look at. A big ground slamming one, a disc shooting one, a Randall from Monsters Inc. But let me just say, okay, that none of these new infested enemies were phallic shaped in any way whatsoever. They are not dick infested, okay? That's all I had to read on yesterday's stream while I was watching it. Especially not the big boy that runs around slamming whatever that big thing is in between its legs. Now I just don't want to hear it. But one of the new enemies did pick up an infested Lipo and throw him at Rebecca's Excalibur which was really cool so we definitely have infested tossers. Now when Rebecca was inside one of the Necromechs it seems that they have different abilities. The one on stream could hover in the air, could slam on the ground and could also charge forward with its head with some kind of shield in front of the head, big kind of chrome dome thing but it looked like a lot of fun to use. Now we didn't see the full fight of Rebecca against the Necromech, but they did mention needing friends in order to help take it down. So in reality, that probably means that one or two whips from your Korra will do the job, right? Right? <laughs> Maybe not. Now there are quick travel points inside the caves called, and forgive me if I slaughter this name with this accent, but Esophages, Esophage, Esophage. These are tentacles that basically suck you back to the surface of the open world. 
So basically you don't have to run all the way back out of a cave if you've gone all the way down to the bottom of one. Now we know that Cambian Drift has a style of day and night cycle, two big worms, okay Steve referred to them as brother and sister on the dev stream, Vome is the moon worm I think that glows white and I think Fass is the sun worm that glowed yellow. On the stream these two seem to fight and kill each other to start the day and night cycle over. So on the dev stream, Fast fired a bolt of something at Vome and either kills it or makes it retreat, which changes the landscape as parts of it rain down on the surface and the infestation even change from glowing yellow to glowing blue. Now this might also bump up enemy difficulty, like the planes of Eidolon, you know the way they're harder at night and easier during the day. Now there's also a possibility that these could be bosses due to the glyphs that also showed up on Reddit. Maybe not. It might actually be hard for us to kill something that gives us the day and night cycle. Now we know that you can ride an insect called a Velocipod, like a K-Drive, and then shoot your weapons while riding it, so insect drive-bys will be a thing. We know that fish will fly in Cambian Drift, but how we catch them, we don't know. Maybe we can shoot them, maybe some redneck fishing with the Kuva Brahma don't know. We know that conservation and floofs are also back. Rebecca mentioned this on stream. Conservation will be a thing. She mentioned that just before jumping onto the back of one of them and using them as a K-Drive. We know that the Necrolisk is the town hub where you get to meet Mother, who is the leader of the Entrati family. She will be the Konzu of this open world, I guess without the early lunch, or the Udico. She mentions that the heart of Deimos is what keeps us alive, while also pumping the arteries of the here and now and the void, but it is failing, with her husband being the only one who knows how to fix it. But that fecker's gone missing. He went for smokes a few years ago and he hasn't came back. So now we gotta go and find him, which seems to be part of the quest to, I guess, initiate the whole town hub. Now some of the speculations uh, within the community right now seem to be that the husband might be Ballas, and with him being captured by the sentience, it would kind of explain why he is missing, but it might not be him, because there is still a lot, and I mean a lot, for us to discover when it comes to this update. Now, like I said, as you can see here, the town hub has got the same vendor symbols as other town hubs, but the most interesting one for me is the anvil symbol. It means augmented items of some kind, whether weapons like Zaws or guns, or even, I guess, the augmented arc wings that they showed quite a while ago on a previous day stream. Also inside the town hub we know that there is a lore room with a 10 o'clock that features void symbols or words which increase in function the more you increase your reputation rank with the Entrati. So each word seems to have lore attached to it or behind it and the higher your reputation is the more lore you might find out about the Entrati and I guess about Deimos in general. But this will be the room where Lloyd and Otak hang out, possibly where the secret faction are and it does look like the the golden door that Rebecca walked through that we got to see in that trailer as well so maybe when you max out all of the reputation with these factions and you rank up as much as possible something else might be revealed within this room not just lore which leads us up to the bounties now mother will give you bounties either in the town hub or it seems also out in the wilds of the Cambian Drift, the same way we get them in Orb Valis or in the Plains. The bounty that Rebecca did on the Tenocon stream was to enter an isolation vault. It was a straightforward bounty, but the rewards were very interesting. The new broken warframe called Zaku, their parts are rewards from the bounties. There seems to also be a new Ashen mod set, that a Ashen carapace as a drop, but the image might be a placeholder, since it is a carapace, that kind of signifies maybe a sentinel instead, so it might not be a mod, because there was also other parts called the Ashen Stinger and the Ashen Mandible, so maybe that's what that is, unless it's maybe the infested bloody cleaning drone, you know, the infested Roomba they showed off. The Zymos was also a bounty reward, now that's the new infested claw weapon that comes with Zaku, so you'll have to get its parts by running bounties. Another reward was something called the Keratinos, possibly a new weapon, we don't know, but it is a blueprint. In fact, the Keratinos might actually be the Sentinel. The Bounty Stage 1 dropped a Trapezium Xenohast, seems to be a new resource. Now, at the end of the stream, like I said, we did see Rebecca using that Necromech, and it looked like a lot of fun. So you're gonna have Warframes, but you can jump out of your Warframe and jump into a Necromech, and then if it gets destroyed, you can jump back into your Warframe. So it seems like the power aspect is definitely there for us with this open world as well. Infested is my favorite enemy type to go up against. I don't know about you guys watching this video, and the amount of detail that seems to have gone into this based on 
dare I say it, what we've seen on some of the other open worlds looks like way more attention to detail than what we've seen in Orb Valis or what we've seen in the planes. They both felt way too big and empty, but this looks way more alive, maybe because it does look like a smaller map. Again, we have to see for ourselves once this update drops and we get to jump into it and see what all of the grind is, what all of the factions are, what all of, I guess, the augmented items we get to build are, as well as the floofs, the fishing, the, the minerals, because there will be mining as well. And I guess the longevity of this open world, once you get everything, what will we do after that? That's probably my only worry. Will it be another kind of empty island? with no reason to go back to but i'll worry about all of that once the update drops and once i get to that stage which will probably be a couple of months away do me a huge favor let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the open world playthrough you seen on yesterday's tanocon dev stream whether you liked it what you liked about it the most or what you didn't like about it feel free to share hit that like button or don't subscribe or don't and as always thanks very much for watching